We are in early spring and it is getting so, so busy. We have been prepping the garden. We have been trying to protect our fruit trees from last minute freezes and frosts. Um, luckily we were successful in that and I think that we will actually get peaches this year. But you can see behind me here, I have one of our chicken coops and I have a garden area. And I thought that it would be really good to come on and do a video for you guys on how you can build a garden almost immediately and for very cheap or even free. Now I wanted this garden area for a medicinal herb garden. I put some culinary herbs in here, some peppers and also flowers. But but one of the main reasons that we wanted to start planting in this area was because we had some grapevines and we knew that grapevines grow quickly and they have great foliage and we wanted to be able to give our chickens some shade in the hot South Carolina summers. So we planted those along the edge of the chicken run here and they grew up and they were beautiful and last year we were so surprised when they actually produced grapes. I didn't think that we would get any kind of a harvest but we got gallons upon gallons of grape juice. So that was so so wonderful. So this year we wanted to mimic this garden on the other side. We have another chicken coop that's identical to this and we wanted to plant more grapevines to give those chickens shade as well as more areas to plant things like flowers and other herbs. So this is the other chicken coop that I was just telling you about. You can see that this garden around here is already built. And if I'm being completely honest with you, I filmed this video about a week ago. And then when I went to edit it to get it out, the wind was so horrible. So I am refilming it, but don't worry. I'm gonna show you some clips of how we actually built this garden. It is so easy and cheap. Um, you guys are gonna love this. I know one of the hardest parts about gardening is when spring is coming upon you, you wanna start gardening, you don't know how to build a garden, you don't know what to do, you feel like you're running out of time. So don't worry guys, I've got this one for you. You can build this in just a few hours. This way of building a garden is so quick and so easy guys, anybody can do it. I highly suggest if you're wanting to get a garden in this year and you're kind of panicked and don't know how to do it, use this method. It's been so successful for us. We have a huge plot down in the main garden that we built the exact same way and my plants have grown amazingly. So this will work for you. One of the big things that everyone always thinks about when they're talking about building a new garden space is soil. In South Carolina, we have really hard red clay and sometimes it's even hard to get a shovel through that. So for me to be able to dig a hole, plant a plant in that and think that that's gonna be successful, it's not realistic. The roots are not gonna be able to penetrate that soil and they won't be able to get the nutrients that they need. So this particular type of garden style um, is built directly directly on top of the ground. So the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is just prep the ground. If there's any big rocks, you're gonna to wanna to get those out of there. If there's any large weeds, just go ahead and pull those. Or if it's just grass, you can just get a mower in there. Now you're gonna to wanna to set it to the lowest setting so that you can get that grass cut as close to the ground as possible. The next thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is find some type of edging for your garden. Now this won't only be for aesthetics, but it's also going to be practical. If you have any type of grasses, particularly like the centipede or Bermuda grasses, or really even any weeds, um, those things are going to quickly overtake your garden unless you have some kind of edging. Now for that, you can use concrete block. You can use old bricks that you found on Facebook Marketplace. You can buy uh, plastic edging, metal edging. You can even use logs from your own property. That would be the free option here. Um, but that edging is really gonna save you from weeds and things trying to creep over into that nice soil that you're gonna fill this with. The next thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is get some cardboard. So we save all of our cardboard from deliveries. I have Nate store that down in the basement for us so that whenever I need it, I can just pull it out, it's right there. But if you just ask your friends or neighbors, they will be happy to save those things for you. Another option is you can go to stores local in your area, talk to the managers there. They will be happy to let you go in the back and go in their dumpsters and get their cardboard out. Um, especially furniture stores, if you have a very large area, Furniture stores have huge pieces of cardboard and they can make it very easy and quick to lay that down in a large garden area. Now that cardboard's gonna do two things. The first thing it's gonna do is it's gonna smother all of those weeds underneath 
um, so that you're not having to fight that every season. And the second thing that it's gonna do is as it breaks down and composts down, um, you're gonna find that you get an amazing amount of worms in your garden. Worms love cardboard. And basically what they do is they eat the cardboard and they create worm castings, which are fantastic for your plants. It's gonna help give them the nutrients that they need and it's gonna make your plants grow so much better. The next thing after that, you are going to want to get some soil. So this is the part that really could probably be the most costly part of the project. Um, now, if you're gonna go to the garden store, I would highly suggest that you don't buy bagged soil. It's extremely expensive. I would suggest that you buy it in bulk. Even if you have to pay a delivery fee, it's gonna be a lot cheaper than if you are to go to the store and just buy it by the bag. Um, another option could be if you found a local farm. So we filled this with composted horse manure. We have an organic horse farm up the street and they sell this stuff for like 10 bucks a scoop. Your typical scoop of compost is going to cost you about 40 to $45. I've even seen it as high as 55. So $10 a scoop is a steal. But there's also a free option. If you have any wooded areas around your property, um, you can just move back that top layer of the forest floor and dig down and you will find some amazing soil. Every year during the fall time, trees will lose their leaves, branches will fall, and that stuff composts down right in place on the forest floor. And if you dig down, you're going to find that there is some really nutrient dense, rich soil in there. Now it is gonna take a little bit of time and a little bit of labor, but it's your free option if you do not wanna spend any money on this garden. You're gonna to wanna to put about a six to an eight inch layer in this garden. And once you get that all smoothed out, you can plant directly into that. Um, I wouldn't suggest going less than six inches because your plants really do need a little bit of depth um, until that cardboard does start to break down and they can reach down into that native soil. Over time, as you amend this garden each year with one or two inches of compost, you're going to find that the native soil underneath is becoming changed by that compost on top, and your plants are gonna be able to reach down into that. Now, like I said, here we have hard red clay, but that's not always a bad thing. That clay actually retains a lot of nutrients, and so I want my plants to be able to access that, and over time, they will be able to. If you're planting bigger things like we did with the grapevines, what I like to do first is actually dig down into the native soil to create a nice pocket. And then I will fill that pocket with a nice quality compost. And then I'll put my plant directly into that. And that's just because those larger plants really need a larger space and a bit more depth. Um, but that's a way to do it without having to dig everything out and put even a, a thicker base of your compost in. So that is it guys, very quick very easy um, put a little bit of time and a little bit of effort into it and it can be absolutely free but if you find that you don't have spring fever just yet and you have a bit of time on your hands i actually have another method of building a garden that is even less labor intensive and less costly so let's go talk about that okay so this next method involves wood chips so if you guys have ever heard of Back to Eden gardening, that's a method of gardening that uses wood chips to plant into. Now it does take a bit of time because you need to wait for those wood chips to compost down, but essentially what you're doing is you're laying a 12 inch layer, sometimes even thicker on an area, and you're giving that about a year to break down and compost down into a really nice rich soil. Um, you could lay cardboard down if you wanted to, if you were really concerned about weeds, but really that thick layer of wood chips should take care of any weeds that are trying to pop up through it. Now you can get wood chips from Chip Drop, although sometimes that can be a little unreliable. You never know when they're gonna show up, and a lot of times they just show up unexpectedly or they never show up. So another option that we've found that is so much better and gets us so many more wood chips is by contacting local arborists. If you just reach out to them with your name and your address and let them know that you're willing to take whatever chips they have when they're in your area, they will be happy to give them to you because they have to pay a disposal fee or they have to have a yard where they're dumping all of these things. And when that's their job every day, these things accumulate very, very quickly. So we found a local arborist that will always bring us wood chips. And it's great for us because we use them around the house. I use them as the pathways in my gardens. I use them everywhere on this property. We use them in the chicken coops. Um, so we love them. And in fact, this year, we're actually trying to compost these down into hardwood mulch. 
Now, the only thing that you do want to consider when you're doing the Back to Eden gardening is that you want to make sure that the entire tree has been chipped up. You want the branches, the leaves, the pine needles, all of that. Your leaves are going to be a really good source of nitrogen, and then the wood is going to be your source of carbon. So you want to make sure that it's the entire tree. Now, I don't know everything that there is to know about Back to Eden gardening, but I can tell you that my experience with it has been absolutely mind-blowing. So like I said before, I use it in my garden for all of my pathways and walkways, and each year we come down with another four to five inches of wood chips just to cover those to make nice areas to walk in the garden. This year when I went down, I noticed that all of my strawberries had grown over my beds and they were growing in those wood chips. And I actually had some leeks and some other plants growing down in there. And with my experience, I always thought that wood chips robbed the soil of nitrogen and that your plants wouldn't thrive in them. But these things were so healthy. So as I started removing my strawberry plants and removing these plants from the walkways, as I dug down, the soil underneath that top layer of wood chips is so incredibly black and rich. I was so amazed. And when we built that garden, we put landscape fabric down. So the only thing that's been on top of that landscape fabric has been wood chips and the landscape fabric is still there. So those wood chips broke down into that beautiful compost and they've been nourishing the plants. Um, those plants sometimes even look healthier than the ones growing in my raised beds. And there's no irrigation in those areas either because the top layer of wood chips is holding in the moisture. So those plants are able to have all of the moisture that they need. So, like I said, if you have a little more time on your hands, you might wanna try that back to Eden gardening. Well, I hope that that video gave you some good information and that you can see that you can put a garden together so quickly and it doesn't have to be expensive. It can even be free if you're willing to put in a little bit of time and labor and you have those materials available on your own property. Um, or if you have a little bit more time and you're not pressed for the season coming upon you, um, you can try that back to Eden garden method. Um, I think you'll be really surprised at how beautiful the soil is that those wood chips break down into. But anyways, guys thank you so much for hanging out with me today and i hope you guys have a great rest of your day